We are following the extremely high-stakes standoff underway along the Russian-Ukrainian border. CBS News intelligence and national security reporter Olivia Gazes has had a chance to sit down with U.S. General James Jones to talk more about the situation and the possibility of diplomacy. Olivia, good morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. General James Jones has held some of the most important positions in U.S. national security. Commandant of the U.S. Marine Corps, leader of NATO's forces as Supreme Allied Commander Europe, and national security advisor to President Obama. He spoke with us about how he sees NATO now reinforcing its eastern flank, holding together against Moscow, and what might be motivating President Putin, as well as whether a diplomatic off-ramp in this crisis is still possible. Here's some of our conversation. What do all of these things signal to you about NATO's capabilities, its readiness to mount a coordinated response in the face of Russian aggression? Well, um, you know, I think that that uh, one of the things that's encouraging is that uh, it, it appears that uh, neither we nor uh, NATO is waiting for the to react after the fact. Uh, I think that's very important. I think I think we need to show intent and capability. Uh, to make sure that uh, President Putin understands that the consequences of what he might do in the Ukraine are, will be not only severe but long-lasting. In the meantime, this discussions continue. Vladimir Putin is going to be talking to Emmanuel Macron um, of France. Does the general believe that there is still a pathway through diplomacy? Yes. He offered this particularly interesting perspective that few Western officials that I've heard have articulated, at least as openly. Later in our conversation, he said that he thought there was some diplomatic leeway on offering guarantees about Ukraine's NATO membership. Not that Ukraine would never join NATO, but something binding that makes it clear it's simply not a reality that we'll see for a good number of years. Publicly, of course, the U.S. and Europe have been steadfast that only NATO is going to determine its future membership. But keep in mind that Ukraine would only, would, would only join if it were unanimously approved by all 30 member states. So it is kind of hard to imagine how that would happen now or in the near future. So we'll see if this idea of offering something like a time-bound guarantee is at all palatable to negotiators on either side. Um, you know, there are some members, despite the fact that members uh, of NATO are pretty united, there are some members that have displayed a, maybe a certain amount of hesitancy when it comes to um, coming down particularly hard. Uh, I'm thinking about Germany, which, you know, buys a lot of um, uh, uh, um, natural gas, oil from, from Russia. How does the general feel about the way in which NATO is holding up under this pressure? Right. Yes. And I heard some of those conversations you had with, with Holly. So as the General Jones explained it, President Putin uh, has long wanted to see NATO fail. He would consider it one of his greatest achievements if it did fail. So if he successfully exploits some of these emerging fractures among the member states and somehow convinces, for example, uh, Germany not to engage in the international sanctions effort that the U.S. has been coordinating, that's a big blow. On the other hand, Russia's aggression has already had this effect of shoring up NATO, unifying it, which for a time, you know, it was a little bit rudderless, uh, kind of looking for a common purpose. So everything now depends on whether that united front holds. As for the U.S. specifically, General Jones thinks that the stakes are equally high if we back down now from this very public stance that we've taken on Ukraine's sovereignty. The consequences to U.S. credibility, he says, could be significant. Mm. He said that it was especially precarious at a time when the U.S. still has work to do to repair its alliances with the West. And, of course, while the eyes of the world, including of China, which has some of its own controversial territorial claims, are fixed squarely on how this crisis unfolds and how it's resolved. Mm. Olivia, really interesting conversation. Thank you.